From the basic circuit theory, you know that the voltage across a linear resistor is directly proportional to the current flowing through the material. If I plot the current voltage relationship of a 1 ohm linear resistor, the graph will be a straight line passing through the origin. So by using Ohm's law, V equals a constant times I. This constant is called the resistance. Similarly, I can say I equals a constant times V, and this constant is called 1 over resistance or conductance. From this graph, you see that the slope of this line is conductance and 1 over the slope of the line is resistance. For semiconductor materials like diodes, the current voltage relationship is not a linear function. In this video, I'll show you different methods for the analysis of diode circuits. Before going further, I would like to get you familiar with different types of notations you will see throughout the course. To distinguish between DC and AC components of an electrical quantity, I will use uppercase letters with uppercase subscript for DC quantities. For example, capital I subscript capital D and capital V subscript capital D are the DC current and voltage values of a diode. Lowercase letters with lowercase subscripts are used for AC quantities. And lowercase letters with uppercase subscripts are used when an electrical quantity contains both DC and AC components. Since the current voltage characteristics of a diode is nonlinear, this tangent line has a different slope at each point of the curve. This means that the resistance value is different at each point. How do we assign a fixed point on the diode IV curve? The answer is easy. By applying a DC voltage to the circuit containing diode, you would be able to assign an operating point, which is also known as the quiescent point, that will not change with time. So by applying a constant or DC voltage, we can bias the diode or move the quiescent point to the desired location. The DC resistance of a diode at a specific operating point can be found by using this relation. Now the question is how can we find the current and voltage of the quiescent point? The diode current and voltage at the quiescent point are indicated by I subscript DQ or V subscript DQ. The first method for finding the operating point current and voltage is load line analysis. This method is used when you have only one nonlinear element like a diode in your circuit. Imagine you have a linear circuit consisting of linear resistors and sources connected to a nonlinear diode. To find the operating point current and voltage of this circuit by using the load line analysis, I can use graphical approach or solve two simultaneous equations numerically. To use the graphical method, I will do the following steps. First, I disconnect the nonlinear element of the circuit, which is the diode. Then replace my linear circuit with a Thevenin's equivalent circuit. I found the Thevenin's equivalent of a circuit very similar to this one in the first chapter. Then I connect my nonlinear diode to the Thevenin's equivalent circuit and apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to the closed loop. This KVL equation is the equation of my load line. By having two points of the load line, I can draw it on my diode IV graph. If I set VD to zero, the diode current will be equal to the Thevenin's voltage divided by R. Also, if I set ID equal to zero, the diode voltage will be equal to the Thevenin's voltage. And by connecting these two points, I can draw the load line on diode current voltage characteristics plane. The point of intersection between the load line and diode IV characteristics is the quiescent point which is also called the Q point. As you see, by changing the parameters of the external circuit, we can change the slope of the load line and also the Q point of the diode. Finding the exact Q point voltage and current values VDQ and IDQ on the graph is very difficult and depending on the scale of the graph, we can estimate these values. For example, by looking at this graph, we can estimate that the Q point value for the diode voltage is approximately 0.75 volts, and the current value is slightly less than 4 milliamps. So, with a good approximation, we can find the voltage and current values of the quiescent point.
To get the most accurate result, we have to solve the two simultaneous equations. One equation is the diode's characteristics equation, and the other one is defined by applying Kirchhoff's voltage law around the closed loop. If the diode's characteristics equation is replaced with the diode current in KVL equation, the result will be a transcendental equation. The best way to solve this type of equations is by using a software package like MATLAB. You can use the solve command in MATLAB to solve these two equations. If you remember, we used the solve command in the first part of this course for calculating electrons and holes densities. You can also solve these equations numerically with a single calculator. As an example for the previous circuit which we solved graphically, if I take this part of the equation to the right side, I will have two expressions and the only variable is the diode voltage. I will create a table with three columns. I guess a value for the diode voltage and put it in the first column of my table. I can start from zero volts and go upwards. Then I calculate the right-hand side expression with this value that I guess for the diode voltage and put the result in the second column of my table. The third column of my table is the error or the difference between the value I guessed, which is the value of the first column, and the calculated value from the right side of the equality in the second column. I repeat this with different values, that's why it is called iterative method. The value at which the number on the first column is the closest to the number on the second column, or the value at which the error or the number on the third column is the smallest value, is the best approximation for VD or the diode voltage. In this example, you can see that the diode voltage of 0.74 is a very good approximation for the diode voltage. I could repeat this process so that the error would become zero, but 0.74 volts is very close to the real voltage. As you saw in this video, load line analysis, which can be performed graphically or by using numerical analysis, is efficient if you have only one diode in the circuit. For circuits having more than one nonlinear element, this method is impractical. In case of having a more complex circuit with multiple diodes, we can model the diodes with linear elements and replace all the diodes in the circuit with a linear equivalent model. Then we can analyze the circuit by using network analysis methods like mesh or nodal analysis. There are many possible models for a diode depending on accuracy, frequency and other parameters. In the next video, you'll get familiar with these models.